The clay trader curse, the kiss of death. Why the heck do stocks fall all the time after I do a video on it? Well, I took notes and I'm gonna expose the clay trader curse and explain exactly how it happens. I wanna first start with three things. First, I realize that the majority of people that need to watch this video are not going to watch it. Second, I expect this video is probably gonna have a lot of thumbs down just because some people may not exactly like what they hear. And then third, no judgments on my part. I used to be you know, a, a part of what I'm gonna talk about and you know, I, I can relate. The reason I speak so confidently and will be speaking so confidently about it is because I totally experience it. In fact, for those of you that have taken my penny stock uh, training course, then you know that I spent like 20, 25 minutes in one of the videos just totally ripping myself apart by going back and looking at you know, my early posts on message boards and social media and stuff. Uh, where you know you can see, wow, I had no idea what was going on. So again, no judgments my, on my part. I was probably more ignorant than a lot of people out there when they were first new. So I'm not saying this like, oh, I got it all figured out and I've always, no, nothing like that. But I wanna just explain it and hopefully some people that need to hear it will actually hear it and then adapt from it. So the clay trader curse, you know, clay, you're the kiss of death. Anytime you post a video, a stock price falls. And this has brought about all sorts of different conspiracy theories and all sorts of stuff, which we'll get to later. But I just wanna explain, how is this possible? What is the system I'm using? How am I causing these stocks to fall all the time? Well, I'm gonna go ahead and expose myself here. Um, get your mind out of the gutter. I'm gonna expose how it works. The cam I made the camera guy laugh there, so I'm happy about that. But I wanna just explain how this all unfolds. So let's just start at the very beginning. Like I said, you saw the notes. I got a lot of notes, but I wanna go through each and every step because I know how it's gonna work. Some people, and I'm sure people will still find little nooks and crannies where they can insert more conspiracy theories, but I'm gonna do my best to cover all the bases. So the first part we're gonna start is popular. I value my time. There's only, only 24 hours in a day. So I wanna be covering stocks that are popular. So that brings up the question, well, how are you defining popular? Well, popular for me is coming from the number of requests slash questions I'm getting on certain ticker symbols. That is how I gauge popularity. Right now, we present, hey, well, this all seems pretty logical to me. But you know, this is the system. This is the clay trader curse. This is how I do it. So requests and questions. That being the question, well, who is asking these requests and questions? Now, when you stop and think about it, is it gonna be somebody that's been trading for 10, 15, 20 years? Are they gonna to need to know what I think about a chart? Are they gonna to need to know, uh, you know where support levels are, where resistance levels are, what candles? No, they're veterans, they've been trading. So what do they care? They don't care what I have to say. And that's always my goal when I am teaching people you know, that sign up for my training courses. My ultimate goal is for them to get to the point where it's like, screw you, Clay, and your video charts. I don't need to know that. I, I know it now. So it's not veteran people that are asking me questions. Who is it gonna be? It's gonna be newer traders. And I have nothing against newer traders. Like I said at the beginning, I was once a new trader. So newer traders are gonna be asking me questions. Brings up the next thing. Well, what sort of charts are they gonna be asking me questions about? Are they gonna be asking me questions about charts that have cobwebs on them? You know, that you can hear a cricket chirping because there's absolutely nothing going on. It's just literally nothing. Or are they gonna be asking me about charts that have fireworks going on? Volume has exploded, maybe there's some awesome news, uh, but regardless, the price has you know, made a big move, but there's all sorts of people talking about it, it's great. Again, just common sense. Which, which one do you think newer traders are gonna be interested in? One, huh, cobwebs, or one where it's just everybody talking about it, fireworks all over the place, there's excitement all over the place. Of course, it's gonna be this one. So let's break down this excitement a little bit more, and, the excitement, I guess they'll do this. So right here is gonna be a 50% move. Now this number can vary, but let's break down that 50% move. Who is a part of this 50% move? Well, down here we have, you know, the experienced. They're the ones that know what's going on. They're the one with established strategies and systems. So they're gonna be getting in pretty soon into the move. They recognize things, they take advantage of it. So that's where those experienced people are gonna be. The next set of people are gonna be, you know, process of learning. So yeah, you know, they're, uh, you know, maybe have invested into a training program, they're, you know, 
they're, they're taking things serious, but they're still in the process of learning. So they're not going to be nearly as good as somebody that's, you know, battle hardened and experienced, but hey, they're learning. So they're going to be, you know, getting in that move somewhere around there. Remember this move here, that's what's creating all the excitement. That's, you know, the fireworks that are going on. And then the last portion of people are going to be getting in right up here near the end of the move. And those are the new traders. Again, I was here. I mean, be honest with yourself. Buying the top, selling the bottom. I know I've done that. Heck, still once in a while, I'll still do it. It's easy to buy the top. Why is it easy to buy the top? Because that's when the price is going. Everybody's hooping and hollering. It's exciting. Isn't it a lot easier to buy when everybody's excited rather than when prices are falling? Oh, I don't want that price is falling. I don't want to get involved in there. Well, there's a reason why, you know, the, the classic saying that most newbie traders, if they're being honest, are going to tell you, yeah, I definitely bought the top before and, and sold the bottom. Well, buying the high, that happens because everybody's so excited about it. Or in other words, you know, chasing the price. So this is this area where the price or where the, a lot of the newer traders are getting in right up towards the top. Now, I'll probably insult some people's intelligence, but what is the purpose of the market? What is purpose? Hopefully you're saying, well, the, the ultimate purpose at the end of the day is to make money. Yes, you can go, well, it's for companies to raise capitalization, it's for this and that. But the end of the day, make money. Well, let's go again. How do you make money in the market? If you're buying, how do you make money? Holding or selling? Well, in order to realize the gains, in order to lock in those gains, you have got to sell. Now, let's just go right back up here again. What has happened? A big, exciting move has happened. What is this causing? Well, this is called fireworks. This has caused new traders that have bought to be excited and want to request questions and make it popular. And that's how I'm doing the video on. So after this happens, yeah, I'm going to do a video on it because it's popular. I'm not wasting my time doing it because there's already a lot of people out there talking about it. So coming back down here, we've now established the purpose of the market is to make money. So then what's going to happen? Well, these experienced people, they want to make money. The stock's up 50%. Sometimes it's up a whole lot more than that. They want to make money. The people, press of learning, hey, they want to make money. So what are they going to do? Well, they're going to sell. So there's where the closing price was. You know, when it was up 50%. 50, 50, uh, percent. And then they're going to sell. So when they do that, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll admit. The price is going to drop maybe somewhere right around there. And that's what we call consolidating. So the price is going to consolidate. Now, for those of you that are in the process of learning experience, you understand, hey, consolidation is not a big deal. Now, sometimes the prices do crash, but hey, they're penny stocks. A lot of these are penny stocks. If you don't know that penny stocks are very, very volatile, then I don't know. But I, I assure you this, penny stocks were very volatile before I ever started doing video charts. I, I promise you that. So, but for this example, let's just say it, it barely pulls back. In fact, it's a healthy move. But in this case, a quote unquote, you know, healthy move for the price. What is that doing to the new people? Well, the new people are all of a sudden in the red. That's not fun. So what does that cause? Well, now you have new people that are in the red. And let's go and kind of talk about some more things. So we'll start back up here. And that is, I'm assuming this. I'm assuming normal. What do I mean by normal? Well, I'm assuming that you, odds are, you are a totally normal person. And normal people, they don't like to be wrong. They don't like wrong, especially when being wrong causes a loss of money. I am competitive by nature. I hate to be wrong. I hate to lose. Throwing the fact that, oh crap, now losing is making me lose money. Ooh, that makes it that much worse. Do you feel that way too? Hey, welcome to the club. You're totally normal. So let's go on to the next step. Because people are, are, are normal, because we have egos as people and we want to protect our ego. I'm not talking about the ego where you walk around, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the best. No, just a normal ego. We want to try to defend that ego. We want to make ourselves feel good about ourselves as much as possible. So because of that, people are going to look to blame external events. Very easy example of that. You take a test, you don't do very well on it. Oh, the teacher, the teacher put questions on there that didn't ever, you know, 
I, they never went over that in class. Same scenario, you get a good grade on it. Yeah, I studied hard, I'm smart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't, you're not, you're always looking to blame external events. That's just basic psychology. This is not rocket science. This is just basic human emotions about normal people. Now, blaming external events, in this case, this is where the video charts come in. Hey, this guy does video charts and those are what causes prices to go down. But a lot of people, their common sense kicks in for a second and they think, well, that's kind of crazy. What? Some guy on YouTube does a video chart and it causes how millions of dollars of you know, trading volume or hundreds and hundreds of thousands of trading volume, it influences that, some video on YouTube, that has that much power. And they're gonna think real quick, well, that's crazy. But what happens? Well, they see that other people are, are believing it. And then in order to kind of justify it, what do they do? Well, they, they start to come up with reasons. So how do they justify it in this exact case? Well, some, and this is really bad. Like if you're in this camp, just stop. They say, oh, it's a curse. If you are trading based on curses and you know superstition and all that stuff, please just stop, stop. Other people are, you know, well, he, you know, it's shorting. He runs a shorting hedge fund. He has a bunch of shorts, him and his chat room short. He pays bashers and they short, and then he shorts. And they start to justify it because at its, at its you know, surface deep, it doesn't really make that much sense. But there's some other people that believe it. And then you know, when you, you justify it with you know, curse or shorting group or you know, who knows how goofy, some, it can get really goofy out there. But this is what's going on, justification. And this, again, I'm not sitting here saying that I'm super smart. I'm just stating hopefully some basic psychology here. So everybody says that, and then because of everything we've already talked about, people wanna make money, the price goes down. Oh, I was right, that's what it is. You know, it, then it never crosses their mind. Wait, maybe you just had a bad entry? Maybe you're just chasing the price because you got caught up in all the excitement? I don't blame you. I bought the top many times. I chase, I still struggle with chasing right now. Because I fully realize when prices are going up, when prices are skyrocketing, and all you do is watch the price, no, it can't go up any further, and it goes up more. No, it can't go up any further, and it goes up more. No way it goes up any further. It goes up more. This is awesome. Bye. And that's what's putting up a lot of the new peer people up in the higher portion of these movements, where even if it's just a healthy move, it's putting them in the red. But they don't want to blame themselves, so they come to me. But be honest with yourself. Maybe it was just a bad entry. Maybe there's not a curse. Maybe there's not some sort of shorting hedge fund or guy that's paying bashers to short. Maybe it's just simply you got a bad entry and you were chasing. And hey, welcome to the club. Welcome to the club. Embrace it. But this is where the final thing comes in. What are you going to do from it? Are you going to learn from it? Or are you going to stay the same? And what's the same? A new trader. And if you're going to stay the same, well, guess what happens? That just puts you... Not back up here because you're probably going to stop requesting because you're going to think, oh, great. That guy, no thank you. That, he, he, I, don't want, I don't want to make his shorting group work. So it's not going to put you all the way back up here in the process. It's going to keep you here. But what it's going to do, it's going to pump you right up to here. So now you're going to be like, yep, I, I'm a believer because it happened to me you know, once or twice. And forget the times where the price actually goes up. Now, I'm not, I'm, remember, going back to the whole teaching test. I took a test, bad grade. You're going to blame somebody else. But when you're right, confirmation bias, you're gonna say, yep, that was all me. That's just a basic psychological you know, emotion term that if you've taken you know, Psychology 101, you've heard of it. But the question is, are you gonna learn? Maybe accept some personal responsibility that, hey, I just simply got a bad entry. Or are you gonna stay the same and then just start you know, never wanting to cast blame on yourself, never wanting to learn? Or are you just gonna to wanna to cast blame on others? And this is not necessarily to do with just video charts. This could be anything in life. Heck, I probably still do it in some aspects of my life that I'm not aware of because we want to feel good about ourselves. We don't want to admit that we are wrong. We don't want to admit that because we are wrong, we actually lost some money. But that's just the market. That's trading. Losses happen. Bad entries happen. And it's got nothing to do with what a lot of people try to conjure up. So that's really, this is the Clay Trader curse explained. All it takes is a little bit of logic, hopefully a little bit of psychology 101 to see how he, us as human creatures, you know, we're creatures of emotion, act, react to things. And to me, it, it seems pretty crystal clear. So this is how I do it. I start with the most popular question and then I let, 
human psychology. I let the market play out and uh, it has given me a, a reputation with some where it's very flattering. They think that I can post a video and then, oh great, this you know, stock trades $15 million you know, dollars a day, but because Clay did something, he's gonna cause $15 million of dollars of selling the next day. Trust me, that is flattering. That's pretty cool, but unfortunately, it's, it's not the truth. It's just how the market works and how human psychology works. So, um, like I said, I, I doubt if, if, if you're kind of bitter and crusty. If you're still watching and you were bitter and crusty, hey, I, I commend you, you made it through, um, and hopefully you have a little bit more of an open mind right now but I would imagine most people probably didn't even give this a start because they wanted to stay in their, their ways of, no, it can't be a bad entry. No, I didn't chase the price. You know, they wanna stay in their little corner of the world and not blame themselves, but this is how it works. Whether or not you wanna believe it, well, that's up to you. But now I finally have a link that I can post to people whenever I see kiss of death, you know, clay trader curse, because odds are, or, you know, I wanna help people. Like I know what it was like to be like this. So if I can help just one or two people kind of break out of this, you know, part of the process where you just keep believing and believing and then spreading the, the, the belief, then that's great because at least I've helped a few people adapt to wanting to learn and then learn actually how to get good entry points, how to be buying down here. So it is what it is. Like I said, believe it or don't believe it, but that's how things actually work within the clay trader curse.